Ooh, what is this that's arrived now? That's right, the transistors have arrived, finally. <laughs> if you're like me and you've just repaired your amplifier, you're going to want to actually just jump into it, start connecting everything and using it because you've missed it, naturally, not so fast. You gotta readjust the idling current first before you do anything else. Now I learned this thanks to a couple of you who commented saying, you know, make sure you do that. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. I'm going to run through it step by step. In fact, I'm just going to do it in front, you know, so those of you who don't know, and those of you who cannot find your service manual will at least get some guidance on what's going on. You know, if I can help, cool. Uh, I managed to get like a, a 10 pack or something. I think it's 10 pack. And, um, I will never run out of these now, thankfully, while testing transistors like this. So, is to never on the voltmeter or on the multimeter, never to use your your normal probes like this. Okay. Always get some hooked ones like this so that <clears throat> there's no chance of shorting. You can basically hook that, hook that um, around a transistor leg. And you can just let go and it will just grab onto it. And this that's obviously the, the same as well. And this will ensure there's no short circuits or anything like this. So I will be doing all that today. So you can you know see exactly what I'm doing. Right, okay. First things first is to replace the transistor, which will be here. Actually, the first thing to do is to check if these transistors are actually the right ones. <laughs> because you don't know. It could be an error in the ones they've given us, so 2S, B647, C or D. I don't know if you can see it, B647, C. So that's just perfect. Transistors are right, the rest of them I will keep very safe because these are hard to get hold of. It's already undone from last time. The I don't need to desolder, thank goodness, because I, I all I need to do is I took this one and put it here just to test it. And that obviously worked. All I need to do is just replace it here. So we'll switch the solar station on. What I now have to do is first make sure obviously no speakers are connected, no headphones are connected. Make sure all the settings, the bass, mid-range treble and the loudness, sub subsonic filter, everything is on default setting. Balance is in the middle and it's in an input that is not used except phono. Uh, the volume is on completely minimum. And I switch it on and leave it for 20 to 30 minutes before I start testing it. Then play the waiting game. Right, you did not think I would make you sit through all that, right? I hope not anyway. Despite the clock being really pretty, <clears throat> right, it's been half an hour around the box, or more or less. I think it's enough time. I will. This thing has been on. It's been a little warm. It's okay. It's normal. Right, extremely careful here because everything is indeed live. And let's put this on DC the voltage and let's look through the, 
the transistors we need to measure. So the emitters, it says, the voltage between the emitters Q729 and Q731. So I need to locate that. As you can see, I'm quite nervous doing this because I don't want to damage this and I do not want to feel pain of electricity going through me. So let's just do this and hope for the best. Oh man, I hate putting my hands inside here. I just cannot get it hooked under that freaking wire. It's highly frustrating. Oh, I can hook it on this resistor. Oh my god, it was such an awkward little place. I wish these probes were longer. And now, the emitter on Q731, which is the leg of this resistor here. These one I'm doing of the leg of resistors is because that's the only place I can grab. Right, so we have the voltage here which is 0 0.036. Now, what are we looking for? We adjust R725 until 11 millivolts is reached. So that is 37 millivolts. Adjust this until it goes to 11 millivolts. There you go. That's that. Now we do the same for the other channel. So it's the emitter here and the emitter there. Actually, it's basically these two, the legs of these two resistors. So the emitter here goes goes to this resistor, and the emitter from there goes to this resistor, and you adjust with that. It's basically as simple as that. So all you're doing is connecting, or is you're checking between the voltages, between the emitters of each output transistor. This emitter here, which goes to here, And the emitter also, which goes to this output transistor, this other one, which is which goes to this, like next to this leg. Now we adjust. You can you see that's very high. It's 86 millivolts. We need to change that. Adjust that so it goes to 11. Millivolts. Ooh, no, down, down. Maybe this was the issue in the first place. Maybe this why, this is why that that transistor blew in the first place, because these were not set, and they went you know out of thingy. With time, they became very imbalanced or something. I'm taking. I'm just figuring here. Come on, eleven. That's it. That's close enough. Okay, so we adjusted both to 11 millivolts. That is nice and equal now. And yeah, practically we're done. The one last test which I need to do is, excuse me, is um, test the output speakers for any DC. If, the, if there's like, you know, 20 to 50 millivolts, it's okay on the output. If there's any more than 50 millivolts or any more than, you know, maximum probably 80 millivolts, or let's say, if there's any more than that on the speaker, this thing will, is going to need sorting out or servicing because that will actually dam that's DC going into the speakers and that will damage, cause damage to the speakers and the amplifier itself, I'm sure. So let's do that and let's hope it's fine. So we have. Freaking heck, the stupid phone has to <laughs> Stupid phone! <laughs> that's not my ringtone, by the way, that's the freaking house phone. <laughs> I got freaking terrified. <laughs> because this thing is live. And I'm like, you know, jumping at any little move. <laughs> okay, let's continue here. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's do this one at a time. This is speaker system one. 
we check the left channel, stick the probe into the left, there, and this probe into the right. Sorry, uh, <coughs> stick this probe into the negative, and we take this out. And this essentially is, they're both connected, I think, but let's just do this anyway, just to be clear. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And it's <clears throat> 15 millivolts, that's perfectly fine. It's not, you know, up to 50 or 80 or anything like this. This is perfectly fine. Now, you s now at the front, you switch speaker system 1 off, turn speaker system 2 on. You can see when I switched one off, it, it, they drop down. So you have, let's take these out. You put this in here. The left channel. And you will see here, that is nine millivolts. DC, perfecto. So you put this in here. And you put this in there. And 15 millivolts DC perfect actually it's practically identical so yeah this amp is fine I can just go and, oops I can just go and use it now so let's turn this off because it scares me while it's on and we will test it with music now connect it to my system So here we are, and I have finally put it back into its place where it should be, and everything is working fine. So let me show you. better than it did before uh, which I'm I noticed instantly the the sound was more clear more crisp and the bass is much smoother I really like this it's obviously I have uh, replaced all the capacitors in here and some of the transistors and a couple of other things I've placed a lot in there actually so it's completely been you know re replenished <laughs> actually one thing I noticed, it sounds better than the Technics. Um, there isn't that... In one of my videos, which you will see here, I noticed um, a hum from every, every time I put this on here, without it turning, there was a loud hum. It was louder than that. This doesn't have it. Let's put this back on. And, but the thing is, it's hard to compare this with the Technics. Obviously, the Technics is more superior over there. It's more superior in the sense that it's got more functions, more inputs. It's got, um, it's got more, it's got more power in it. It's a higher power amplifier. However, I find this one sounds clearer. Now, I, I cannot say that. I'm being fair here because this has had all the, the components replaced, the capacitors, you know, some transistors, all that. It's, had it, it's been replenished. That one hasn't. That one has got some issues. So maybe if I replenish that, if I change all the capacitors, it will sound good. So it's hard to compare, but so far I really like the sound of this one. It's, may, it's way better. Maybe. <laughs> it's way better. <laughs> okay, so we switch this. Onto a cassette over here. Switch that off. Cassette. Switch that off.
yay, we have Smiley smiling again. <laughs> I never actually thought I'd see I forgot to mention that this amplifier does not heat up nowhere near as much as it did before the actual fix, before it broke down. Um, and just before it did break down, I noticed it getting extremely hot whilst idle. I get the feeling that readjusting the idling current really helps, especially even if, you know, it's after a few years, just check it, you know, um, because now it's working way cooler and I've used it for a while and I, I was enjoying my records earlier on um, and it just did not get hot nowhere near. In all honesty, there was a big part of me that was not expecting this thing to be fixed. Not at all, especially at the beginning when I had no clue. I opened this thing up and I was like, where do I begin? <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to do. And I, I think me putting it on YouTube was a cry for help, not out. <laughs> um, I've been talking to a couple of people lately who approached me and they have had uh, issues with our amplifier too and who are still struggling. I want to say to them and also others who are watching this that I've been in the same place that you are now and I almost gave up a few times and I've had the under the bed state I've been in the under the bed state before as in you know I just put it under my bed literally and I thought okay this is going nowhere do not lose hope please do not lose hope in fact I can say that it was a blessing in disguise because I started making electronics videos on the, on YouTube I started doing projects <laughs> I was inspired by it and I am actually currently finishing off my project, my amplifier project, building my own amplifier. I never dreamt of doing this. I never thought about doing this before um, actually, you know, starting to repair this amplifier. I had no idea how to build one. My knowledge in electronics has increased immensely. It's a blessing in disguise. Don't give up. It's a learning curve. It's a challenge. Life has set you. The links to all my Marantz repair videos are all in the description next to the comment box and underneath the like and subscribe buttons. Um, so please feel free. And also I will put them up as annotations over here. So if anyone is struggling and if it helps going looking through my videos at the, the steps I've taken, go ahead. And all I can say now is I wish you good luck with your repair. <laughs>